Christian Communications Network from Belfast, Northern Ireland, welcomes you to today's programme. Here is Deciding Your Destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart, OBE. Thank you for watching today on Deciding Your Destiny. We're going to hear a wonderful message by Dr. Cecil Stewart on Forward Into Freedom. This message is inspiring, encouraging and totally uplifting. So I say you watch, stay watching and be blessed and know that who the sun sets free is free indeed. Bless you. And one thing Satan doesn't want, he doesn't want you to be set free. Because if you get set free and you walk in the word, you're going to be a danger to his kingdom. But we have the power of the Holy Spirit to go forward anyway and not listen to the enemy. But they look back. They made the mistake of looking back and they saw the great chariots and horses and the size of the enemy and their insignificance. And the enemy will always try to diminish you and make you look small. And in ourselves we are. But in Christ we're mighty. Amen. We have divine ability on the inside. And so they looked back and they began to cry. And Moses was leading them forward. They began to cry out to Moses and say, Why did you bring us out here into the wilderness to die? Why didn't you leave us under the bondage of Pharaoh, under the whiplash of the uh, people who we were slaves to? And they began to accuse him. But Moses had a word from God. And what was it? Exodus 14, 15. God said to him, Speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. Amen. He didn't say run away. He said, keep going forward. Even though the enemy is coming behind you, leave it up to me. When it looks like you're in for a bad time and you can't survive this one, keep going forward. When the enemy tells me, tells you it's over, it's over, and you have no hope of a future, that you're destroyed, keep going forward. When it looks like the enemy has really trapped you this time, keep going forward because God will bring you and make a way where there's no way. And he opened up the Red Sea and brought them out. So he says, speak to the children of Israel and tell them, change your position. Number one is change your position, if you're taking notes. If you want to go forward into freedom, number one, change your position. What does that mean? Well, the children of Israel, they were in a negative frame of mind. They were told by God to prepare to go over the Red Sea and to go into liberty, into the Promised Land. But the Bible says they looked back and gave up hope. So the Lord said, encamp by this area ready to go over the next day into the Promised Land. But then they had given up hope because they saw the enemy behind them. But they changed the position. Whenever Moses said, go forward, do not be afraid, go forward. And then the Bible says, the enemy thought he had them trapped because they were now in a position where they couldn't go anywhere. The Red Sea was there. They were, it looked like in a corner. But I want to tell you, when we keep going forward, it's not us that are trapped, it's the enemy. Amen. Amen. I said the enemy is trapped. He has no answers for people who go in the Word. We continue to go forward even when it seems impossible. So get ready to cross over. Change your position. Change your thinking. Change your talking. Change your attitude. No place for negativity. No place for worry and anxiety. Don't entertain it for one second. It will always bring you down. Keep in the Word. Continue in your Word and the truth will set you free. And so Moses knew this and he spoke to them to keep going forward. Never forget what it says in Romans 8, 17. We are heirs of God and we are joint heirs with Jesus. We are in the kingdom. We have been born again. We have been brought out from under the jurisdiction of Satan and we have been brought into the kingdom. So keep your enthusiasm alive. Somebody said, nothing great is ever accomplished without enthusiasm. That's why the enemy tries to rob you of enthusiasm through bad reports, through confusion, through negativity, through whispers, through gossip. No, don't let the enemy rob you of enthusiasm. God's people should be the most enthusiastic people on the face of the earth. We are the redeemed. 
This is the greatest story ever told. The redemption through the blood of Christ from a lost eternity, from the power of Satan, from a wasted life. We've been given purpose. This wonderful gospel, this wonderful call that we have is more valuable than any other thing on the face of the earth. So keep your momentum up. Keep your enthusiasm alive. We are going forward. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 verse 6 that he's raised us up and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So number one, change your position. If you're in a negative mode, if you're in a negative attitude, change your thinking. Start to pray, start to worship. Even when you feel like you're rock bottom. Somebody said, I'm not just at rock bottom, I'm below the rocks, <laughs> under the rocks. Well, you can still rise again. Amen. Psalm 34 says, I'll bless the Lord at all times and his prayer shall continually be in my mouth. That's one thing the devil can never stop you doing is praising. Even when he's hit you the worst blow ever and you feel it's over and you're still praising, the devil has a bit of a head stagger. He gets confused. So keep your mouth full of praise. Somebody said, don't wait for your ship to come in. Swim out and meet it. Amen. We need to step out in faith and not be stopped, but go forward into freedom. So number one is change your position. Number two, use what you've got. What did God say to Moses? He was facing the Red Sea right against it. The enemy was behind him. The big horses and chariots of Pharaoh, all the mighty warriors, they felt naturally they couldn't go anywhere. But the Bible says God spoke to him. And God said, what have you got in your hand? So point number two is use what you've got. First one is change your position. Number two is use what you've got. You have got something mighty in you. The very youngest convert here, the very youngest person here, if you have received Jesus Christ, you have the greater one within you. You have his wisdom, you have his ability, you have his power. Use what you've got. So Moses didn't seem to have anything against the enemy, such a mighty army. They were in an impossible position. But a many know impossibilities is the very right place for miracles. Amen? The very right place for miracles. So God said, what have you got? He said, just a rod. And God said, okay, lift the rod up and divide the sea. So are you using what you've got? Are you using your prayer power? Are you using your praise power? Are you using your word and testimony every day? Are you using your opportunities to add value to other people? Are you encouraging others? Are you speaking blessing over your family? Are you speaking peace over your situation and maybe troubled? Are you even exercising your faith to bind Satan because you've been given power over all the power of the enemy? So use what you've got. We know the story of the talents in Matthew 25 where one person hid his talent because he just had one. The others used theirs. The one who got the two and the one who got the five. Sometimes we hide our talents because we think we don't have much. But start to do what you can. Use what you've got. Use what you've got. You have the opportunity to add value to others to encourage others, to lift up the hands of those who hang down. For those who are about to give up and walk away, you can say, no, 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 we're going to get through this. We're going to fight through this. We're going to still be standing in two months, in two years, in five years, because we are standing in the faith of God. So use what you've got. 2 Peter 1, 3, he's given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. I can remember a young man who used to work for us way back in the 60s when we first started to broadcast. And he was an editor for the radio. And he was very enthusiastic. He traveled a long way to be with us each week. But later on in his life, he became a bit disenchanted with church or negative about people and began to speak negatively. And it wasn't too long until he was away from church, away from fellowship. He got into a relationship and got married and for years and years and years when his children were growing up, never brought them to church. Probably 20 years passed by. What a waste of years and his family suffering. Thankfully, he's come back now. But we should guard against 
any word or attitude of other people that tries to arrest our progress. That's why the scripture says in Philippines, well, in Proverbs 4, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the rivers of life. So use what you've got. I love what it says in John 15, 11. Jesus spoke these words, and he said to the people, he said, I've said these things to you that my joy might be in you and that your joy might be full. Now, what was the things he said? You need to read John 15 because he's talking about abiding in the vine, the fact that he is the tree and we are the branches. He was talking about the importance of continuing in the word, of spending time with the Lord, of looking after our relationship. And he says, I've done all this and I've said all this to you so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be filled. How many could do with some more joy? How many know the world needs to see some real joy? Not a lot of sour-faced people, but a joyful people. Amen? A merry heart does good like a medicine. And we can all do with it an increase in this, in our own lives. And don't judge each day by the harvest you may reap, but judge it by the seeds that you sow. You may not always see a harvest, but you can always sow a seed. Amen? Every day can be meaningful. You may not see a harvest all of a sudden, but keep an attitude of faith. Keep going forward, speaking words of life, praying for other people, ministering to other people, lifting up the hands of others, praying for the church, for the community, for other people. You may say, but I'm hurting myself. Well, you need to pray for others more than ever because it's when you pray for others you get blessed yourself. Number three, very quickly, stop crying and start commanding. You see, the children of Israel were crying as though they were hopeless and helpless, and Pharaoh was chasing them, and he was having a great time because he could see they were afraid. But you know, the word was fear not. Speak to the children of Israel that to go forward. So we need to stop crying and start commanding. Amen? And say, Satan, get your hands off my family, off the church, off the community. In the name of Jesus, we have authority over all the powers of the enemy. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4, verses 8 and 9, we're troubled on every side, but not distressed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. We're cast down, but not destroyed. You may have troubled, and you will, but let's keep going forward in faith, forward into freedom, forward in faith, forward in answers to prayer. Even when it looks like family may not be changing, you've been praying for family members, there's attitudes that's wrong, some may be away from God, some may be no interest in the Lord. You look after your own relationship and go forward anyway, and you keep full of God, and then you'll be in a position to bless them, no matter what. There's no advantage in becoming negative, there's no advantage in becoming discouraged, there's no advantage by looking back, and regrets and discouragement, that's where Satan works. We look forward, amen? We have a good future, and we have a good hope every single day of our lives. Winston Churchill said, the price of greatness is responsibility. So we need to take responsibility to look after our own spiritual well-being, and that's when we become great followers. The price of greatness is responsibility. Being a faithful servant being one who will be diligent and consistent, a person of integrity, a person who will not compromise or give in to the enemy and his evil snares, but people who will use their authority and not be afraid to change as we go forward. Stop crying and start commanding. Number four, almost finished, be single-minded. You see, the children of Israel, one moment they were walking and delighted and seeing good things. The next minute when they saw the enemy, they were crying and negative and complaining and blaming others. Scripture says in James 1.8 that a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. So be single-minded. Make your mind up you are going to be an art and art follower of Jesus, that you are going forward into freedom, that you will be a witness, that you will spend the time with the Lord, even if you have to rise extra early, spend the time Take time to be in strong faith and feed on the word which is the bread of life. Be single-minded. Second Corinthians 5, 7 says, we walk by faith and not by sight. So don't let pressures of circumstances 
change your mind and thinking all kinds of negative thoughts, you guard your mind. Your mind is your mind, and the mind of Christ has been given to you. So we can think like he thinks and walk as he walks. I love what it says in James 1.17. It says, Every good and every perfect gift comes from the Father above, with whom there's no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Listen to me, folks. There's nothing good outside the will of God. A lot of people get into sin, compromise, lust, immoral lifestyles, in adultery, fornication, because they think they're going to get some treats for sins. No. There's nothing good outside the will of God. It will bring destruction. Sin will always degrade, devalue, and destroy. And so we need to realize that we have been given every good and perfect gift from the Father. The devil has no good plan for you. His plan is destruction. So we need to follow hard after the Lord. Number five, you're not trapped. <laughs> if you've ever felt trapped financially, maybe you felt trapped because of your health, you felt trapped by loneliness, maybe by strife or people's opinion of you, you felt like you're going nowhere. You're not trapped because of past mistakes, you're not trapped because of offense, you can repent and go forward. Offense is like a stumbling block that blocks your road. But you're not trapped. Isaiah 43, 19, he makes a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. You're not trapped because of envy or strife of others. You're not trapped by anything, even what seems immovable. If you will go forward into freedom, all of heaven is behind you. And last point is this. Number six, get on with your life. Get on with your life. That's what the Lord spoke to me. I was coming through a big struggle some time ago, and I was spending too much time thinking about the bad things. And the Lord said to me, get on with your life. Get on with the ministry. You have a call. Time is short. Lost people need to hear your words. You need to be radiating the presence of God. Get on with your life. Go forward through the trials. Go forward through the offense. Go forward through the opposition. Go forward when you don't understand all that's happening. Trust him when you don't understand, even when you're disappointed. Get on with your life. Ecclesiastes 11, verse 4 says, He that observes the wind shall not sow, and he that regards the clouds will not reap. So if we look at the circumstances, we'll never go forward. You're waiting for a better day, another day. No, you don't have to wait. Don't regard the clouds. Go forward into freedom. Go forward into victory. And last verse is, John 9 verse 4 is for you and I. Jesus said, we must work while it is day. The night comes when no one can work. We have an opportunity, folks. Every day we rub shoulders with people that are hurting. Every day we rub shoulders with people that are lost. We can bring God into the schools, into the colleges, into the university, into the government, into the workplace, everywhere. We must go forward into freedom. Stay free ourselves, and we will be able to bring freedom to other people in Jesus' name. Forward into Freedom was actually a brilliant message by Pastor Cecil. Um, the most important thing that I uh, picked up was on changing the position from where we are to where we want to be and we can only do that by God's grace, God's word, trusting and believing on exactly who God is and who we are in him um, and forward into freedom impacts not only us and our families but everybody else that we deal with in everyday situations so um, yeah I'm Forward into freedom is just absolutely brilliant if we put it into practice of who God is and focusing, keeping our eyes focused on him because he's the author and finisher of our faith. Uh, forward into freedom is a message basically about keeping your eyes fixed on Jesus and uh, not letting the world or anything of the world uh, divert your attention. Uh, just depending on the Lord, trusting in the Lord with all your heart and not leaning on your own understanding. Uh, putting God first in everything, seeking first the kingdom of God, and you'll get the best uh, from God. It is a message of freedom, uh, freedom from sin, freedom from bondage, uh, from depression. Uh, it is life, it's a life-changing message.
What a wonderful word by Dr. Cecil Stewart on Forward into Freedom. If you would like any more information on this programme, we would love to hear from you if you just get in contact with our website. We also would love you to stay watching to hear Holly Graham's interview. Um, it's a continuation of our interview with Dr. Cecil Stewart. Enjoy and keep watching. You know, I heard the story about a, a young little, little girl, I think she was about seven or eight, she said she wanted an unusual present for Christmas. And uh, her mother said, what would, what would your unusual present be? She said, I want you to buy me a torch. <laughs> So her mother got the torch and wrapped it up and on Christmas morning she opened it and she ran with the torch, it was very bright, and she ran back to her mother and said, this torch doesn't work, I can't see it shining. And then the mother said, but you have to find some darkness. Yeah. So she went into a room where there was no, where there was darkness and shone it. So it's like you as a witness going to shine the light at your school or at your workplace. Yeah. And uh, do you find it easy to have confidence to share? Well, I think I found it quite difficult at the start to, to share with people. Not because I was ashamed, but because a lot of people are quite hard into it and don't really, want to, don't really want to talk about God. God's not a subject. A lot of people have maybe lost family or whatever and they blame God. And it's difficult then to, to share with them because they, they don't want to know anything. Mm -hmm. But they don't realise how loving God is, and He's not like that at all. But you really have to just find the right time to share with them. And uh, I had the opportunity when I was in religious studies to be able to do that and to share with people and have an open talk about that. My dad got the opportunity to come in too and speak to them. And it was so nice for them to, to see like the reality of Christians living out today, because I think some people find it very difficult difficult when they're getting told uh, like you have to be saved you have to be saved you have to be saved and not really having the revelation of the love of God That's and right. then then for the repentance mm -hmm. so it was definitely nice to be able to share with them so it got easier definitely within time but it was difficult at the start but you just have to push through that it is really uh, a big thing because Many people think God is the big judge, don't yeah, they? Yeah, definitely. And, and as you say, they don't realise he's so full of love. In fact, the scripture says God is love, doesn't yes, it? Yes, definitely. It does. And uh, how do people respond when you share that God really loves you, he's not judging you? They, they kind of act a bit shocked and have quite a lot of questions, definitely. Mm -hmm. You know, especially the ones that have lost people or um, have been grown up and their parents don't believe. So it's very like a hardened subject from like generations, mm -hmm. really. And uh, so they find it, I suppose, a shock, but also a lot of people accept it. They're like, yeah, yeah, I know God loves me, but maybe don't want to make the commitment. Yes. But... Uh, yeah, definitely. They are more accepting of it. Now that I've built relationship with them, they're mm. more accepting because they see my lifestyle. You know, it's important to definitely show people your lifestyle because a lot of people see, oh, well, such and such, you know, they were, they were Christians, but then they went off or mm. they're not very good people, but they say that they're Christians. You know, people really have to see the lifestyle of you living out day to day, mm. loving God. And of course, the greatest example of all is Jesus himself. Yes, definitely. He said, I'm the way and the truth and the life. He that follows me will not walk in darkness, yeah. but have the light of life. So God is about giving life some color. Yes, he is. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, we have outside our window, uh, kitchen window, lovely flowers, uh, hi, what do you call them? Hydra... Hydrangeas. Hydrangeas. <laughs> and, uh, they, they weren't appearing for two years because the gardener made a mistake and cut them at the wrong time. Oh dear. And that reminded me of sometimes people get offended and then mm -hmm. they, they don't shine the same. Yeah. The colour has gone out of their life. How important it is for you then to tell other people that they need to shine. Definitely. <laughs> what would you say to those who have not yet got a relationship with the Lord? Definitely. Uh 
experience God, go to church and just be able to have a relationship with yourself and don't look at other people's relationship with God because your relationship with God is personal. It's not everybody in a relationship together with God, it's you and God together. And I think that that's so important. So if you get the opportunity, go to church and just be able to get planted in a church and realize the love of God because he really does love you and has a great plan for your life. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people may not understand uh, what you're talking about when you talk about enjoying church. Okay. Because to them, it's often a ritual and a mm -hmm. form and uh, rules, you know. Uh, how would you describe church life to those people? Church is like, like a big family. You get all your friends and you have your your pastors and everyone that's in your church, you get to know them so well. And there's different events that you can definitely get to plugged in with different people and get a family around you and there's worship and and there's the service and it's not all like sit down and you have to be very quiet and just like it's not boring church isn't boring it's good fun i think people definitely have the wrong idea of church finding it very like oh you just go sit down you have to be very quiet and then you leave again mm -hmm. you know you you enter in with God and you have fun with God and it's not just him sitting up there and you know with a big stick you know yeah, like we're yeah. waiting to judge you or anything he's so loving mm. and he's so much fun and I'm really glad you said that Holly because lots of people totally misunderstand what church is meant to be yeah it's meant to be full of life and fellowship and joy where people find guidance for every area of their lives and that's why we say true freedom is finding the will of God for your life and realizing that your Heavenly Father loves you far more than you could ever, ever comprehend or understand. And because He loves you, He has your best interest at heart. And therefore, there's nothing to be gained by living independent of God or going your own way. The wise person will submit to the leadership of the Holy Spirit and then you walk into freedom and enjoy a life that is meaningful and full of purpose. So God bless you and thank you for joining with us today. I would like to remind you to get a copy of this little Hope Builder. Give it over and get on. Because if you've had setbacks, disappointments, confusion, or bad things have happened in your life, remember, you can give it over to the Lord. Give your past over and get on with your life because God still loves you and he has his hand upon your life. So get in touch with us at the address on your screen. We'd like to send you this free of charge because I know it'll help you if you'll read it carefully and study it and look at the scriptures. God wants you to be free from every fear, anxiety, bondage, from everything that would hold you back. He wants to set you free. So thanks again, Holly, for Thank being you. with us today. And uh, I hope you'll continue to be a real shining light in your community. Thank you very much. God bless you. For more information on today's program, contact us today. Email ccn at ccnorg.com. Check us out on Facebook and YouTube and visit our website ccnorg.com. Oh,